my little garden is my little piece of heaven. I was able to put in a lot of perennials. Mm -hmm. Some of them got a little excited and took over. But I also have on the side, I have all different plants that are perennial. And uh, I have red, red stem dogwood, which is growing all winter long, which I was surprised. And I have forsythia and pussy willows going to come up. Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Linning. I'm Sue and we are here in Gardening Zone 6B in New England. This is my mom, Cora, and we're going to look at some seeds together today. Come on along. So this is my order from Richter's. I love Richter's. They um, historically have been the only place I've been able to buy patchouli plants. Mm -hmm. They are in Canada, so they do, they can be a little precious um, as far as prices, but really didn't do too badly this year. All right, so I've got live plants coming soon. Uh, a lot of shade lovers, mm -hmm. Siberian ginseng and that kind. But I got some weird stuff. I got um, bayberry. Ooh, bayberry you have to keep in the uh, garage all winter long when it starts to grow because it doesn't take the winter very well. You sure? Let me see. What are, where are you perennial? Perennial, but it doesn't Zones like five it. through nine, perennial. Okay. We're 6B, so we should be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, that skull cap, I think that's Mike's. Black cumin. This has the prettiest little blue flowers. I planted some cumin last year that gave me gorgeous little pink flowers. So I think I'm going to plant these together. Mm. I'll take one or two of those when we get there. Okay, let's set them aside here. Um, this is Mike's. I think he and I were going to... Do something with it. I think we were gonna split that. This is caterpillar plant that's Mike's. And I got woad. I got Chinese woad and plain old woad woad. And I, no, I don't know the difference between them. What's woad? It is a dye plant. It's what gives you that blue indigo. Oh, really? Yeah, so I figured oh, I cool. would finally start my dye garden this year and begin with woad. So we can do maybe some batiking stuff. I was thinking, you know, with the, yeah. Oh, shibori. You're thinking yes. of shibori where you right. tie. Yeah. Yes. Let's give it a shot. Let's okay. see what Let's we can see do. if it grows. Okay. And do you want to try some no. in your garden too? No. no. Okay. You try that here because then you can get a whole bunch of them. Mm. And then I'll give you plants. Yeah. We'll worry about that when okay. it starts to grow. This is marshmallow. That's Mike's. Um, whorehound. Confetti cilantro. Huh, that's interesting. Um, I think this was supposed to be a slow bolt. It must be a slow bolt. I. Do you want some? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, comfrey. This was Mike and I were gonna split that. Butterfly pea. This is part of my dye garden. You make potions out of it that are blue, and then you pour lemon in, and they change color to oh, pinkish purple. That'll be fun. Do you want? No, I want to see what you do with your garden. It should be big blue blossoms. Oh. So what I'm thinking is, I'll collect those and dry them. I don't know how that's going to work out, but you're going to do good. I'm going to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, and agrimony, agrimony. I don't know who this is. This. Is that. Might be mine, might be Mike's. We'll see. So that's that's my Richter's pile. Okay. For this year. So you gardened. You gardened everywhere that we lived. I yes. remember you Jersey gardening the best. on the edge of a patio in New Jersey in yes. our first house. And there were tiny corn. Yes. I loved the that tiny was very, That was in New York. That was in No, that box. was in New Jersey. You sure? Because I had a hundred percent. There was a big um, pitcher with coxcomb in it mm -hmm. and celosia. And it was underneath the kitchen windows. Mm -hmm. it was and it was like three ears of corn. I had stuck them in there. You gave me some kind of a mixed bag, mixed seed thing, and it's probably a kitty garden. But you gardened in that. And then you moved we had on red up. roses, long stem red roses in that garden. Really? On Harbinson red, Place? Yes. And there was white mm. roses in the front. 
That I remember. You also had Forsythia and Pussy Willow. Right. And do you know, because they were planted together, it was probably 15 more years before I knew that they were not the same plant. Oh. I thought that Forsythia turned into Pussy Willow. No, for years. I've got Forsythia and Pussy Willow now. Yes, you do. In this garden. And what's her name? Peggy was so angry because I got the last Pussy Willow. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know she wanted it, and I wasn't going to break it apart. That's okay. That one's for you. The garden that I remember best, I think it was behind, like, a hedge. Yes, a it was. Hedge. And they tried to break the hedge apart and couldn't do it, so they just left it and let it grow because it was so hard to cut. What were those? It was some kind of evergreen. They're boxwood. Boxwood? Mm-hmm. They're wonderful. And you, if you are got sharp enough tools... You can keep them like a little tiny hedge, and they look so pretty. Well, these were like 15, 20 feet tall. I know. Well, that was the problem. <laughs> but that was a good yard. You had it was a, wonderful. That was a large space you were gardening yeah, in, we bordered had, by the boxwoods. We had uh, squash and, and tomatoes, and we had everything there. That, and it wasn't that big. We had that ridiculous apple tree. Yes, that was on the other side. That was the <laughs> apple tree. And then the pears. Yep. Every five years? She was giving away pears every few years by the wheelbarrow full because there were just so many pears. So every many five pears. years, pear trees bear tremendous fruit, amount of fruit. And we had like bags of it. Every time somebody came in, here, take some pears, oh take gosh. some pears. That's okay. You can do whatever you want. It's yes, your garden. I know, and I love it. So you want to see what I got from Emma Garden? Yes. Let's see what's going on here. So this is, oh my God, this is mostly vegetables. And I have to tell you what happened here before I even turn any of these over. I, I heard bad news about Baker Creek. Yes. And I was like, I don't want to buy from them until I know what's yes. going on. You know, I'd like to confirm right. what's going on. I, I do a lot of my politics with my purse. You should. You know, so, so I bought from somebody else. And... I love M.I. Gardner. I, I love M.I. Gardner. I watch his, his uh, YouTube channel all the time, and he's freaking fantastic. I don't know why I haven't bought seeds from him before, but that was the perfect opportunity to buy seeds. Also, I may have bought every tomato that was available because I was kind of panicky. I bought a whole bunch <laughs> of different tomatoes. I, there's so much here. Here, yeah. let's, let's see what's going on. Alright, so we'll make piles. We'll make piles. <laughs> <laughs> Mahjong! <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're looking at. I got caraway. I want to grow our own caraway. We grew fennel and some coriander and some other stuff up there. And this year I want to do... What's caraway? Own. Isn't that like seeds that you... Yeah, you put them in rye bread. It, oh, okay. I cook gotcha. Hungarian mushroom soup with that. I've been cooking with a lot of caraway. Really? Yeah. I use caraway for with rye bread. I use caraway when I make onions. I really? put caraway and paprika in it. Um, caraway, paprika, mushrooms, beef broth, and barley. It's a really good beef barley soup. So I cook with this. Oh. Um, my canicious with yes. the mushrooms. Yes. This is this and oh, it's not chewy though. Caraway? Yeah. What do you what do you mean chewy? Like a seed. You don't notice it. It's no. cooked. No. It's cooked yeah. at that point. Um, so we'll do that. Okay, let's let's start with beans. I got so many beans. I got yeah, me too. so many beans. I think I ha I'll have to look at these. I think most of them are pole varieties. I learned a lesson this year about string beans. I learned that if you can them after they're nice and mature, um, they're hard to eat. Really? So, yeah, they have strings. They have strings. I guess that's why they call them string beans. Um, so I went with stringless stuff, like, across the board this year. Uh, you got Go squash? Fish. No. Go fish. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I got tomatoes here. I'm okay. starting to carrots. Oh. Okay, you have tomatoes. Yes. All right. Carrots. Carrots. Sesame. I'm doing sesame oh, really? this year. That yeah. should be fun. I like that. Here's eggplant. Okay. I like the stringy Beans. eggplant, but I haven't had any luck with that. Ooh. My issue combo. with stripy eggplants is that I never know when they're ready. Yes. <laughs> 
Do you have the cucumbers? Yes. Okay, and the tomatoes. Ooh. This is basil. Basil. I, I'm doing all kinds of basils again. Yes. I even got this one because I want to see the color on it. I, I'd like to let that one bloom. This is beets. Peas. Look at these things. Ooh. And they're supposed to be sweet, sweet, sweet. Zinnia. Trage pea. Oh, peas are here. I'm sorry. My That's bad. Okay. This is Brussels sprouts. Yes. But they're purple. They are. I like purple stuff. Okay, this is... Melon. This looks yeah, so melon. good. This banana melon looked delicious. And this is a moon and stars variety of watermelon. It's cumin. So this is another cumin that I picked up to go with the other ones. I want to see Did how that have, was. Oh, the black cumin was in with the Richter stuff, right? right? right tomato, tomato. We have lots and lots of beans here. I know, I got all kinds of stuff. I want to fill up the arches again. Oh yeah, that was great. So well, what I've got, I've got to do is to decide when to plant something. Okay. That's that's why I bought that book with the log book. Mm -hmm. I wrote down everything I'm going to plant. Okay. And I'm going to, on the next page, I'm going to say what time it's going to go in. Correct. Do you want to borrow my little slidey? I have a Actually. Clyde's Garden Planner slider that you... You open it and close it to show the date, um, your last frost dates. I have, I uh, printed out one of those logs. Okay. And it's supposed to tell you when to plant stuff, so. Oh, I like the, the dark one. The Brussels sprouts? I have Brussels sprouts. Yeah, but do you have purple ones? No. no. Do you want some? No. You sure? Yeah, I like green ones. I'm not. They turn green when you cook them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, the, the, what was it? The green beans that were, and then the I was like, green beans. wait a minute. Those <laughs> are <laughs> green. A lot of times when you cook purple produce, the anthocyanins change oh. with the heat, so. Yeah, that was kind of cool. It's fun. It's a good time. Yeah. I got um, some new cucumbers from these guys. There's homemade pickles. Ooh. Um, a, supposedly, you can harvest these real small, like gherkins, and make sour gherkins. Ooh, I was thinking about that. That sounds delicious. Uh, these are Armenian. What is that? I, they, I hope they curl like that, too. These look really cool. Yeah. So I'll give you some seeds when we open these. Okay, okay. Yeah, that would be fun. See, I still maybe get the squirrels will be confused. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> So I bought every tomato that was in stock. I just, I was so distressed and at the same time so excited about ordering from a new place that I just, I got daffy. So we're going to be... You're going to have a lot of tomato plants. These are a lot of tomato plants. I don't think I'm going to plant all of these tomatoes. No, I wouldn't. I think you should take some of these okay, tomatoes. Okay, give me what you don't want. I don't know what I don't want, but okay. look through these. Pick your favorites, you know, and we'll split them up when I start seeds. Okay, any one of those is fine if you want to give me one. When we'll split ready, them up. Open we'll open yeah. make confetti, yes. and I'll give you half. How's that okay, sound? Sounds we'll, great. Um, actually, I'm not going to do that because we'll be swimming in indeterminate tomatoes again. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. We had... I had like eight foot tall spoon tomato plants and they dropped these current tomatoes everywhere. Yep. So I'm kind of counting on seeing those return to the garden um, by themselves. And they're, they're a wild cultivar. So they're really hardy. Well, the squirrels and the chipmunks really like them. Well, they're mover arounders, <laughs> and, right? And what's his face? Mr. Bailey decided he liked them too. Bailey is... Well, he's half Jack Russell and he's half Shih Tzu, and he's which fast. makes him either a Jack Shit or a Shit Russell. I don't know. He's funny as heck, but boy, did he love those little tomatoes! Every time they hit the ground, he was. That's fantastic. My chickens loved them too. Yeah. There came a point in the season where I pretty much gave up harvesting those. Oh, I just, I had, I had rows yes. of them and I was sitting down to do the bottoms 
and then crouching to do the middles, and then reaching up to do the tops. Yeah. And I was doing this every four or five days, and it was like, oh, there oh, were tons shoot. of them. And you I, had them in, I put them in one corner of the silver tray, the silver uh, pot, and and they just migrated. I we call this a crisis of bounty. I was like, <laughs> hey. I, Hair yeah, squirrels, you know. <laughs> I threw them over the fence at one point. So and many tomatoes. Flavors. I know they look. They're cool. I have historically not had the best time with these these ones with the ripples. Yeah. Um, but they're so pretty. I mean, I've tried two kinds of florin of costaludos, which are those oh, those beautiful. fluted tomatoes. Yeah. These oh. are a different kind. What These are, taste, I don't, oh, the Costaludos were fantastic. Oh, okay. They were rich, delicious slicers. So I'm just going to try these again. I had a, I had a big volunteer bush of, of either Florentine or Genovese last year. They were super nice. Jersey Devils. Yeah, the long ones. I love the long ones. The long ones were the only ones that grew in my garden. The round <laughs> ones didn't grow, but the long ones grew, and you had to go into the, where the little cherry, tiny cherry tomatoes were to get in there because oh. they grew together. <laughs> <laughs> and and I would pull them out before the squirrels came. Is the Korean longs? Yes. Yeah, I was one. pulling them as soon as they blushed. Oh, they and just delicious. Your most delicious tomato will be in the garden at 4.30 in the afternoon after two days of no rain. Right? That's going to be the most delicious tomato mm -hmm. you've ever had. Mm -hmm. Second best is they start to blush. You let them ripen in here. Because, dude, you can't even, like, there's... Squirrels. The best tomato is the one that you get to eat. Yes. <laughs> not not the, the variety of critters. I did cut a lot of strawberries in half this year. Because the birds had eaten the other side. <laughs> yeah, I have... Actually, Peggy gave me two um, strawberry, not bushes, but you know, the, the bare beginnings. roots. Yeah, the bare roots. So I'm going to work on that too. I have, I told you, I have tons of stuff to do. I don't need anybody else in my house. <laughs> go away, go away. So, you know. <laughs> so this is what I'm, I'm doing this year. Um, I want sunflowers too. I have sunflowers. You want red ones, or do you want? I don't know. When you get, when you open them, I'll take one or two. And I love the spaghetti squash. I'm never growing spaghetti squash again, except for you. Do you know I only grow spaghetti squash for you? I know. I know. We, and it lasts forever. You can put it in the basement for a while. I have you... Hubbard squash in my basement yeah. from September. Yeah. Um, I didn't grow those. Full disclosure, I didn't grow the Howard squash. Somebody else did. What was I just going to tell you? About the acorns, about the spaghetti squash. Oh, so spaghetti squash took over our yard. We had to build it a cubby with lattice because it just took over so hardcore. That was the very first year we were here. Um, and we got so sick of spaghetti squash by the end of the season. So sick of it. But you didn't. I make southern... Spaghetti squash casserole. What is that, ma'am? And it is. What's in it? It's just uh, cream and spaghetti squash and whatever you like, you know, herbies and um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, a banana. Matzo meal or whatever, you know. It's, like a breadcrumbs? Yeah, breadcrumbs. Okay. And a couple of eggs. And you mix it all together, and you go go in the fridge. You go in the fridge for a while. The oven, maybe, and then put it in the oven. But it, oh, so it sits cold. It sits for cold a while? for a little while, and then you put it in the oven because it's going to take a while for the oven to come to. You have to anyway. come over here, and we'll cook it together. Okay, I'll bring the recipe. Ah, oh, shit! I'm growing spaghetti squash. Oh, don't <laughs> worry, I can buy, you can buy it cheap. I will grow you a squash woman. <laughs> Masha. I have a very small garden and uh, pots on the porch so that increases the amount of stuff I can grow. So we'll do, we'll have to do check-ins on your containers. Yes. Because most of what you're doing is containery, but you've yes. got that beautiful little 
plot that's marked out in yes. the backyard. Well, that's that's just um, perennials. Okay. And they're pretty. Yeah. So I, I love to sit out there and watch the bees and the dragonflies come and and. She's got good pollinators, y'all. Pollinate and they just and I've noticed that some of the bees have different coloration than other bees. Oh, do you have green ones by you? The green no. ground bees? Yes, I've had those. I love them. I'm going to make you, uh, I have all the ingredients to make you a little house for them to come, the solitary bees. They okay. Don't, they don't uh, sting. Okay. And they come and they visit and then they leave. All right, but we'll they're big up. pollinators, and cool. I have all the little things to put together. I have to get a little wooden box, and then I'm set. Michaels has them, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Michaels. I need to get some canvas and stuff like that. We should tell them goodbye. Yes. Thanks for hanging out with us today while we talked garden and hung out. Well, we will catch you up soon. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye. That was fun. When we were in China, um, we got to visit somebody who was uh, just an ordinary person. They mm -hmm. wanted to show us how they, the people were there. And he, was, he had a garden, and his garden was against the wall in his backyard, and it was like, you know, but he had onions that were huge, and I was so impressed with his onions, but he and I couldn't talk because we didn't speak the same language, oh, and the translator didn't want to be bothered. He had the onions were so huge, and they were so white, and, you know, he had all kinds of other stuff, and this is the way they live there, you know, in this area. They, they make all their own produce, they have their own animals, and it's very sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. 